Hi everyone. Uh, what we're going to do today, uh, by the end of the video, is hopefully you will learn how to write an effective conclusion. It's also known as putting it all together. In the uh, lab that we did with the pendulum, the period of a pendulum, we actually tested three different variables at separate times uh, to see how they affected the period of a pendulum. So you're actually going to be writing three different conclusions for this lab. So what is a conclusion? Well, a conclusion is a summary of the experiment. It's putting the hypothesis together with the data and coming up with a conclusion or ending thought. It's a written answer to the original question. So you all have written hypotheses for each variable. So now it's up to you to see if your hypothesis was accepted or rejected by looking and analyzing your data. So where do you start? Every conclusion begins with a topic sentence. Well, in a conclusion, the topic sentence is nothing more than a restatement of the problem. Every variable that you test it, you wrote a problem or a problem was written above the procedure. Make sure that you restate this problem. Here's an example. The problem that you first tested was if mass affects the period of the pendulum or how does mass affect the period of a pendulum. When you start writing your conclusion paragraph, you could say something like, this experiment tested if the mass of the pendulum bob affected the period of the pendulum. By restating the problem, you have three different, remember, you have to begin by restating the problem. Now remember, you have three different questions that you're investigating, so you will have three paragraphs that each begin with a restatement of the question being investigated. Now, on to your hypothesis. Your hypothesis is the most important thing in your conclusion. You need to restate it. What was predicted? And give a reason behind why you predicted what you did. Each of your paragraphs should restate and provide a reason for the hypothesis. So this is what we've learned so far. We learned we had to restate the problem and restate your hypothesis. When you restate your hypothesis, you can incorporate it into a sentence that sounds something like, it was predicted that if the mass increased, then the period of the pendulum would increase. That's just an example. You need to provide also, next sentence would be reasons for that prediction. Next, was your hypothesis supported, not supported, or indifferent? So in other words, was your hypothesis right, wrong, or indifferent? You're going to look to accept or reject your hypothesis. To do that, you need to talk to your data. You need to see what the data says. If it does, you accept the hypothesis. If it doesn't, you reject the hypothesis. And if the data appears not to be talking, or doesn't neither support or not support the data, you neither reject or accept the hypothesis. And this happens a lot. Sometimes you have to just do some, you know, more trials or more experiments to, to really see what's going on with your manipulated and responding variable and the relationship they might have. Now, to talk to your data is pretty much providing, act, is, is looking and seeing what your data actually said. So here's how I want you to do that. When you look at your data, you're going to provide a sentence that backs up your previous statement of accepting or rejecting your hypothesis. For instance, if the average seconds per period for one was 1.2 for three washers, 1.0 for two washers, and 1.1 second for one washer, when you look at your bar graph that you made for this, remember the trend line that you drew and it was pretty much a flat line? And a flat line means no slope, which means there's no change in y per unit of x. So you really have to wonder, you know, should you accept your hypothesis if you said there was a difference between, that there should be a difference between the timing or the period of the pendulum? Well, these numbers are so close together. And on your graph, you can see that your line was flat. So any difference that you see, such as 0.2 and 0 and 0.1, that two-tenth of a second difference was most likely due to chance than, actual di than the actual difference um, due to mass. So 
The best thing to do here is look at your bar graphs, draw your trend line, and, and see if it's a flat line or see if it's a, uh, a line with a pretty obvious slope. Okay, so your conclusion outline so far, restate the problem, restate your hypothesis. When you restate your hypothesis, remember you can incorporate it into a sentence that sounds something like it was predicted that. Accept or reject your hypothesis. Provide evidence for that. That's going to be your numerical summary. That's when you talk to your data. So uh, next what you want to do is when you look at your graph, you're going to have to identify a type of relationship if there was any. So I know these are line graphs down here, but we can pretty much just assume that these would represent trend lines maybe on your bar graphs. So remember, how did the manipulated variable affect the responding variable? Was there any trends or patterns in the data? Here's what you can do. And when you look on the right here, this shows a direct relationship, so that as x increased, so did y. Next here, on the right, we have an inverse relationship. As x increased, our y values decreased. That would be an inverse relationship. See what your trend line looks like on your bar graph to identify these relationships. The data below here the scatter plot here shows really no correlation between the x and the y variables. There doesn't seem to be a pattern that we can identify. And over here is a bar graph where the averages represented by the top of each bar pretty much form that flat slope or that zero slope uh, trend line. So that pattern or correlation, there really is none between the x and the y axis or the x and the y variables. So, so far we have you restating the problem. You state your hypothesis. It was predicted that. You can incorporate your hypothesis into that sentence. You're then going to provide evidence, talk to your data. Don't forget that numerical summary. Identify any relations or relationships or trends. You've got three to think about. On the fourth component in your conclusion, you've got discuss any issues or problems with the investigation. These were things that would throw off, cause changes in the responding variable um, that you didn't uh, that, that really you, you tried to control but there was just no way to do it. So for instance every time you, you or your partner press the uh, timer on your uh, cell phones that sometimes you may have pressed it quicker than another time uh, so we would call that that would be like an error in timing. Uh, maybe you got a little off on your counting. Every time the pendulum rotated or wobbled did that affect the period of the pendulum? That could have been different every trial or every time you release the pendulum, did you release it from exactly the same angle every time? These are all things that could cause a change in the period of the pendulum and you know you really didn't mean for it to do that so it could have thrown off your results. Finally you have a concluding sentence and this sentence should begin with the transitional word or words such as to sum it up, clearly, in conclusion, obviously, rephrase the original question or problem, and explain what you learned because remember go back to the purpose of the lab it's great that you're able to take the concept of energy and transformation of energy in this lab but don't forget what we were trying to do which is to get you to practice writing hypotheses collect data graph and write an effective conclusion so and you need to take that and connect it to the actual study of science so once again restate the problem restate your hypothesis Accept or reject your hypothesis, provide a numerical statement for that. Relationships or trends in the data, you need to identify if there's any issues or problems with the lab. The number five is wrap it up. So that's all I've got. I hope that was helpful. And if you haven't handed in your conclusion by the end of the day on Thursday, then you have homework over Christmas break. And that's why I made this video to help you do that. Okay, so I will see you uh, back in class.